Lombok, Indonesia. A paradise island that draws over a million tourists a year. Yet beneath its volcanic hills is a hidden treasure, gold. And that's why the island has one of the densest populations of gold miners in Indonesia, Southeast Asia's biggest gold producer. But this industry is fueled by a deadly element. One drop of mercury could kill and make you a health problem. Jadi pasien-pasien memang yang gejala-gejala mirip hampir ke sana, mengarah ke paru-paru sana memang ada. And the toxin is spreading. Konsentrasi merkuri di antara 8.000 sampai 10.000 itu di angka harus siap evakuasi. Mercury is powering a poorly regulated multi-billion dollar gold mining industry. How did this mercury get here? And why is it being used? Itu membuat saya juga harus berhati-hati. Mereka sensitif dengan namanya jurnalis. Ini ada bahaya yang harus kita harus terus mengingatkan masyarakat. NGOs working in and around Sekatong, an area consisting of three small villages, have counted nearly 50 children born with neurological and physical birth defects since 2018. Gimana sekarang? Siapa namanya ini? Yurika. Yurika. Ibu Yur Anna Yurika baru statusnya ya belum pernah kontrol ke sini. Today Four of these children are being examined by a concerned local doctor. He is worried there may be a common thread tying their conditions together. Jadi pasien-pasien memang yang gejala-gejala mirip hampir ke sana, mengarah ke paru-paru sana memang ada. Kalau dibilang prihatin sangat-sangat prihatin karena saya juga punya anak kecil ya. Akibat dari keracunan merkuri ini dampaknya sangat besar dan itu pun belum ada pengobatannya. Hamil juga sudah terpapar daerah merkuri ya? Iya. Iya. Umur satu tahun, satu tahun, satu tahun dia mulai kejang, di gangguan pendengarnya. Kalau was wasnya sih tetap was was kita soalnya kan sempat diceritakan juga kan efek dari merkuri itu apa gitu. Exposure to mercury can cause irreversible and even fatal harm. This is well documented with previous major disasters serving as stark reminders of the risks it poses. This child of six is an even more severe case. She is incapable of expressing herself and barely reacts to light. Mercury poisoning was once tied to power generation and manufacturing. However, by the 21st century, most industries adopted alternative, mercury-free production methods. Then, a new danger emerged. Yeah. The story of informal gold mining in Lombok started around 15 years ago, when locals spotted an opportunity. A large mining company found uh, the large deposits in Lombok. Local people started to think about, oh, if there is gold for large scale, probably we can get the small scale one. So they thought they could get, you know, the crumbs from the big guys. Informal mining took off, eventually producing more gold than corporate mining companies. Up until now, the gold mining activities, especially the small scale, are illegal. Illegal and illicit. Normally secretive about their work, today, one miner has agreed to share his story. Nama saya Patuhur Rahman. Saya saya lahir di Lombok. Seperti nelayan kalau ini kan, ya apa ya soal kerja yang enak di luar seperti. Dapat udara yang bagus di luar, tapi 
penghasilnya sulit. Sulit. Nah, kalau saya ini mau jadi penambang lah dulu, jadi ada penghasilan lebih lah. Belum berangkat ke sapan alat-alat dulu ya. Seperti karung, lah apa, bekal, lampu, kayak apa. Alat-alat untuk nambang lah ya. Ya habis itu perjalanan sudah dua jam ya, naik boleh ya. Dua jam ya. Keluarga saya, paman saya, semua saudara-saudara eh, saya kan, keluarga saya, memang dulu dia jadi penambang. Agaklah senang lah, senang. Ya, memang betul senang lah kalau udah sampai ke sini ya. Ya, kalau hubungan sih sama teman-teman ya di saudara lah. Kalau perasaan was-was mesti ada ya. An estimated 22,000 people in Lombok depend on small-scale gold mining to earn a living. Excavated precariously from this steep mountainside is Fatul Rahman's personal mine, but he doesn't own the land. It's currently over 15 meters deep. His naturally small frame and muscular build provide him with a particular advantage when descending into the depths. Abul sebelum masuk kita ya perlu keselamatan lah dulu ya. The work is extremely dangerous. Low oxygen levels, intense heat, falling rocks, flash floods, and gas leaks from their portable tools are a few of the risks. Only recently, Fatur Arman blacked out due to a lack of oxygen. Alhamdulillah, sampai sekarang ya masih bernapas ya. Pikiran teman-teman saya ini orang sini, saya kira saya tidak ada. Warnanya nih, sebelahnya putih, putih, tengah-tengahnya loh. Eh, mantap warnanya hijau, kuning ada, urat hitamnya itu, urat hitamnya. Mantap. But the real danger begins when Fatul Rahman returns home. Now, he must process the ore to extract the gold. And mercury is the key component. Ya, nanti pas kita bawa batu dari gunung, ya kita sampai di rumah, kita tumbuh ya, kita tumbuh kecil-kecil. The rocks are placed in a ball mill, where they are combined with weights and hundreds of liters of water. Gradually, they break down into sediment. Tujuan saya ini untuk mengikat emas yang ada di dalam gelondong ini. It is poured into the ball mill to bind with the gold. The mercury is then burned away, leaving behind pure gold and poisonous fumes. Finally, the toxic wastewater is discarded into the environment. Marsaket datang ke rumah untuk mengpromosikan bahayanya Irak saya. Tapi 
Mau gimana lagi? <laughs> Kalau dapat batu nanti pakai apa untuk olahnya itu bingung kita kan? Mercury is an extremely hazardous metal that can have severe consequences on human health and the environment. It can cause Minamata disease, which is a serious condition leading to coma, paralysis, death. It can also cause neurological disorders, especially in children. It can cross the human placenta leading to uh, birth defects and other neurological problems. Globally, 20% of the annual gold production comes from informal miners, like Fatul Rahman. In Indonesia, more gold may be produced like this than in formal mining operations. To complicate matters, the miners' bore mills are often located near local water sources. The contaminated wastewater then finds its way into drinking wells, rice paddies, and the rivers and seas where people fish. Hasil penelitian yang dilakukan oleh beberapa kampus uh, seperti kayak Unram, Universitas Mataram, itu semua menunjukkan bahwa di dalam vegetasi atau di dalam tumbuhan atau dalam buah-buahan atau di dalam uh, produksi pangan yang dihasilkan itu juga mengandung merkuri gitu. Nah, ini menjadi concern sekali karena dengan demikian Toksisitas atau keracunan atau masalah daripada e, merkuri ini bukan hanya di daerah tersebut tapi bisa melebar ke tempat yang lain. But that's not all. Mercury, which is burnt off the gold, turns into vapor and accumulates in the air until one day, somewhere, it falls as toxic rain. Itu jadi mau anginnya bertiup kemana aja itu bisa kemana aja darinya menyebar dan kita tidak bisa menghindar terhadap udara. Mercury does not break down in the environment. The more it is used, the more it accumulates, building up in the food chain. Today, Fatul Rahman is a happy man. Sekiran saya ini sekitar setengah gram lah. Harga 300, alhamdulillah perasaan saya, alhamdulillah senang, bahagialah. That's more than twice the amount he earned daily as a fisherman. But at what cost will this come for his family, neighbors, and community? It is the only metal that is liquid at room temperature. Mix it with gold and watch a mesmerizing ritual of bonding unfold. The first emperor of China is thought to have died after consuming mercury in his pursuit of immortality. He was not the last. Abraham Lincoln, the pirate king Blackbeard, and Isaac Newton are all believed to have suffered from mercury poisoning. In the 20th century, mercury continued to be used in medicines, light bulbs, thermometers, cosmetics, and more. But in the 1950s, a mercury leak at a factory in the seaside town of Minamata, Japan, killed more than 900 people and left thousands permanently disabled. Here is another child whose father died of Minamata disease. Her limbs are deformed. The disaster led to tighter regulations around the world. By 2013, a global treaty, the Minamata Convention on Mercury, was born. Today, 99 countries, including Indonesia, have ratified the convention, mandating them to protect their citizens from the dangers of this deadly metal.
Yet, the threat continues. In Lombok, as a result of gold mining, mercury use has dramatically increased. And there is a further complication. Kesulitannya untuk uh, pemeriksaan merkuri itu gejalanya itu uh, menyerupai banyak uh, penyebab yang lain. Kalau merkuri itu utamanya akan terikat di saraf. Jadi gejala-gejala yang muncul itu juga banyak gejala kelainan saraf. Itu sehingga uh, kita memerlukan banyak uji ya untuk meyakinkan bahwa betul-betul ini adalah uh, karena merkuri. NGOs have previously collected samples in Lombok, but their efforts were not extensive. Concerned with a lack of action, today Dr. Eka is leading a team to conduct biomarker testing of the community. Motivasinya uh, karena ini masalah kami di sini lebih ingin tahu gitu seberapa besar masalah itu. First on their list is Fatal Rahman and his family. Jadi Bapak Tiang Niki, eh, namanya Dr. Eka. Sudah lama bekerja di Gelondongan dan kita juga ingin monitor kondisi masyarakat. Jadi eh, sekarang kita akan melakukan pemeriksaan kepada Bapak dan eh, istri serta anak nanti. Physical and cognitive tests are carried out to detect early signs of poisoning. Don't telunjuk. Nah itu kalau lurus. Sekarang nanti saya pindah-pindah telunjuk saya bapak ikuti. Tapi sudah mulai terjadi perubahan. Nih kita lihat sudah mulai apa namanya warnanya lebih memutih ya. Seperti logam nih ke. Kalau kita g. Enak deh sulit ada lah. G. Pernah ya pernah. Pernah. Ya. Saya ke kerja tambangan juga nak masuk debu ya. Berapa lama merasa ini sering keluar liurnya? Bisa sejelo atau enggak? Gak. Dua jutaan sejelo. Atau sampai orang. Hari tu hari. Then the team takes hair and nail samples. Ya, alhamdulillah lah senang ya kita diperiksa sama ibu doktor, bapak doktor yang kemarin. Saya juga kaget. The investigation continues with a search for mercury in the air. Ini adalah Lumex Portable Mercury Analyzer. Jadi dengan alat ini kita bisa mengukur udara apa kandungan merkuri di udara secara langsung di lokasi. The analyzer generates results immediately. A reading above 1,000 is considered unsafe. Sebelum titik ketiga. Nah, dapat segini. Berarti angka pengukuran yang ini, 8,657. Konsentrasi merkuri di sekitar gunung ini itu berkisar antara 8.000 sampai 10.000 nanogram per meter kubik. Di sini sudah terlihat konsentrasi merkuri di antara 8.000 sampai 10.000 itu di angka harus siap evakuasi. Ya dengan hasil ini saya merasa kesehatan Pak Faturaman dan keluarganya cukup terancam. Benar itu aja heran ya kaget lah sampai 10.000 lah. Kesimpulan sementara kami ya bahwa Pak Fatur Rahman sudah ada gangguan beberapa tes menunjukkan hasil koordinasi gerakan kiri dan kanan itu tidak seimbang. Kemudian kemampuan mengkoordinasi motorik halus juga apa namanya lebih lambat ya dari orang normal yang seharusnya seperti itu. Jadi sementara ada gangguan memang. But the tests may have come too late for Fatur Rahman's son. Ternyata pas keluar, 
aman-aman keluar aman laki-laki alhamdulillah pas pulang satu hari di rumah nyusu ndak mau dia muntah-muntah terus saya langsung telepon dokter minta bantuan operasi kecil ya ambil dagingnya aja untuk tes apa masalahnya ternyata masalahnya ususnya itu ada agak dia mati sedikit ndak bermain dia due to his deformed intestines Fatul Rahman's child is unable to move his bowels. Instead, the excrement needs to be sucked out through a tube on a daily basis. Di sekarang kan pakai ini kita kita ajarin dulu di sana di rumah sakit kita praktek dulu. Cuma dua orang aja bapak dan ibunya aja. But this can only be a temporary fix. Janin di dalam kandungan itu mendapatkan paparan merkuri dari ibunya. Mulai dari perubahan ya, perubahan apa namanya e, secara molekuler ya, secara genetik ya. Kemudian nanti e, apa namanya terjadi perubahan, mungkin terjadi perubahan pembentukan organ. Pak dokter bedah informasikan saya sekarang untuk dipercepat katanya. Tapi gimana belum ada uang. Kemarin saya tanyakan kalau tidak ada kartu PJS, Pak dokter gimana? Sekitar 30 lebih ya. His child's illness has left Fatul Rahman in the unenviable position of having to mine more to be able to pay for the surgery. Over the next two days, the team collects hair and nail cuttings from nine more individuals. It will take a month for the samples to be analyzed in a lab. Wah, kadang kau ada kuku, kan jadi artis bodoh kuku, cerita kuku. Whilst the results might provide answers for those tested in Lombok, it is just a microcosm of what remains a widespread problem across much of Indonesia. In West Nusa Tenggara alone, uh, probably 1,000 ton a year. 1,000 ton of mercury. One drop of mercury could kill and, and make you make you a health problem. But we are talking about 1,000 ton. Not grams, not kilo. And all over Indonesia, it's 3,500 tons. The health issues faced by Fatul Rahman and his family are not unique to Lombok. In many countries across the globe, informal miners are also using mercury to extract gold. In Asia, the problem is thought to be most rampant in Indonesia, where there are over 850 small-scale mining hotspots across the country. Nobody knows exactly how much mercury is being used. Estimates vary wildly from 300 tons to over 3,500. What is known is that there are at least 300,000 miners using mercury in Indonesia. Each of them uses up to 20 parts mercury for every part of gold recovered. This is a problem for the Indonesian government, who has committed internationally to deal with mercury. The Konvensi Minamata is, on the basis of it, a agreement of international agreement that binds the member states to protect the human and the environment from the dangers of mercury. 
Nah Indonesia telah meratifikasi uh, konvensi Minamata ini melalui undang-undang di tahun 2017. Jadi di 2005 berdasarkan rencana aksi Indonesia berkomitmen untuk uh, me menghapuskan penggunaan merkuri tersebut. The National Action Plan includes policies like the adoption of alternative technologies for gold processing and the tougher enforcement of laws. It also recommends that the production of mercury should be stopped. This starts with the prohibition of the mining of an ore called cinnabar, which mercury is made from. There are a couple of things that uh, can be done to stop all this problem created by mercury in Indonesia. Uh, first is to stop the extraction or mining of cinnabar, including the smelting and the process to produce mercury from the ore. And the second is to prohibit it, the sale trade of mercury, including exportation. Mining and refining cinnabar ore in Indonesia is not against the law if you have a permit. But the government has not issued any permits, making it de facto illegal. Regardless, a secret and illicit domestic production and supply chain for mercury is still prospering. At today's price, 3,500 tons of mercury could be worth over 370 million US dollars. Kira-kira asalnya dari mana, Pak? Kalau sesuai dengan informasi, batu sinabar asalnya dari Pulau Seram ini. To be able to do that in Indonesia, you have to have a backup. So you will be able to continue the business and activities without any disturbance. So these high rank officials could be police, military, or a government official. And we heard rumors and anecdotal stories from people underground that there are some uh, important people backing up their businesses. We contacted the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, but it refused to comment on the illicit mercury trade. One of the largest cinnabar mines in Indonesia is allegedly on Seram Island in Maluku province. And despite its illegal nature, it can be seen from space. These satellite pictures were taken in August 2022. The blue tents hide the mining activity and machinery that allow miners to excavate cinnabar ore. Local journalists are trying to expose this illegal activity. Saya sementara uh, menuju ke gunung yang sinabar. Saya Pri, saya adalah uh, jurnalis. Keseharian saya memang uh, banyak meliput soal lingkungan dan juga memang soal uh, masyarakat adat di Maluku dan Maluku Utara. Untuk melihat uh, aktivitas tenda-tenda susah sulit ya untuk masuk ke sana dan itu membuat saya juga harus berhati-hati mereka sensitif dengan namanya jurnalis karena kalau jurnalis itu masuk ke sana itu akan membuka juga informasi kepada uh, publik bahwa memang aktivitas tambang ilegal ini masih ada Rislan tried to get protection from the village head where the mine is situated but failed Maksudnya jangan sampai dia terekspos ke media. Saya telusuri dari beberapa penambang yang mencoba membuka-buka gitu sampai kepada siapa-siapa yang mereka setor itu kan itu itu diduga kuat itu kan diduga kuat ada keterlibatan aparat yang di sana. What Rislan saw in person confirmed the satellite imagery. He filmed the following on his mobile phone. Belakang saya tenda-tenda sudah menara. Ini di badan gunung dan memang dari ketinggian laut sekitar lima 
seribu lah seribu meter itu juga banyak ribuan tenda-tenda yang dibangun dan tidak mungkin tidak diketahui nah ini persoalannya ini uh, apakah ini dikoordinasikan dengan pihak tertentu apakah juga dibiarkan On the beach, men and women were working to wash and crush the ore in preparation for its refining. Seperti pemirsa lihat di belakang saya adalah bagaimana masyarakat juga melakukan pendulang uh, material. Ya, kecil ya kan jalan ke atas. Jalan ke atas, jalan ke atas, jalan ke atas. Hmm. Attempts to shut down the mines were publicized in the media in 2017 and 2020. But as Rizlan found out, these attempts have failed. Uh, jadi, uh, memang uh, fakta bahwa uh, pertambangan sinab sinabar di daerah Indonesia, misalnya di Seram, masih ada. Itu memang ada beberapa faktor. Pertama, memang uh, penegakan hukum kita lemah. Uh, penegakan hukum kita lemah itu ada beberapa faktor. Misalnya keterlibatan aparat atau uh, uh, kapasitas tidak memadai. The ore on Seram is believed to be some of the purest in the world. This creates an alluring opportunity for those with ill intentions. Setelah adanya ditemukan batu sinabar di Seram Barat, tapi e, di Indonesia Timur tuh banyak sekali batu sinabar, batu sinabar. Indonesia menjadi eksportir daripada Merkuri. Yes, e, jumlahnya e, paling besar untuk saat ini. Dari database yang saya kumpulkan, itu ada semacam tren di, di aparat penegak hukum, keterlibatan aparat penegak hukum. Misalnya ada e, kasus di Sukabumi, Nah, ketika uh, kita telusuri dari dokumen pengadilan ini, ternyata uh, supplier atau uh, sinabar ini diantarkan atau disuplai oleh uh, menggunakan trap uh, TNI dengan uh, pengemudi dan juga plat nom nomor TNI, begitu. mendapatkan juga putusan pengadilan Ambon, itu di mana uh, polisi misalnya uh, terlibat uh, memperjualbelikan uh, merkuri. In recent years, illegal refineries have been spotted in Ambon, Bogor, and Jombang, but they're constantly on the move to evade detection. And now, Rislan believes that there are also refineries on Seram Island. Dia memang aktivitas sementara aktivitas dan Memang itu kan air yang mereka tarik ke atas itu kan untuk untuk kan untuk mengolah itu kan. With the influx of domestic mercury, Indonesian gold miners now have a plentiful supply of the toxic metal. Traditionally sold through a middleman, it's currently available on social media platforms like Facebook where sellers provide delivery right to the miner's doorstep. We checked with Facebook why this is happening, but they have yet to reply. With an illicit but highly functional supply chain, Mercury is finding its way into the hands of gold miners all over Indonesia. This is welcome news to the miners in Sekatong, Lombok, where the majority of the population are reliant on gold mining for a living. Just one gram of gold 
is worth nearly half the usual monthly minimum wage. Ya, kalau masalah tambang ya, mungkin orang-orang penting semua sih. Nggak masalahnya nggak ada kerjaan lagi dah. Rata itu nambang dah. Kalau disekotong nambang doang. Tanya kalau kita nggak pakai raksa, tetap nggak dapat mas. Biarpun dia kelihatan masnya batu itu nggak nggak dapat. Experts are trying their best to convince the miners to change their ways. Kita mengedukasi sudah sebetulnya. Setiap kali kita turun ke lapangan, ke lokasi, kita selalu mengedukasi. Mereka tahu kalau bahwa merkuri itu uh, sangat beracun buat diri mereka. Tapi kadang-kadang karena mereka tidak mau dilarang menggunakan merkuri, mereka sendiri sering sekali kita edukasi dan kemudian mereka menjadi kayak nangtangin ya, gitu nangtangin kita. Ya kalau masalah raksa ya, dibilang ada juga bahaya juga. Ada dibilang ya enggak, bingung juga kan. Akhirnya mereka berpendapat, e, ya sudah ini adalah merupakan resiko kita. What miners might not understand is the slow and insidious effects of mercury poisoning. These can include Minamata disease, a serious condition that can lead to paralysis, neurological disorders and death. Local researcher Dr. Eka previously led a team to carry out testing on 10 individuals in Sekatong. Now the results are back. For mercury concentrations in hair, the safe threshold is one part per million. None of the people tested were within the safe threshold. Munaha, a current miner's sample, came back 26.7 times higher than the safe level. Makali, who used to be a miner, registered 9.8 times higher. His child, 5.3 times the safe level. Fatul Rahman's result showed a reading that was 12.7 times higher, while his baby boy, Nazil, recorded four times the safe level. What you get from the result in Sekotongs, uh, I'm say that uh, the result is very, very alarming. And we should be very concerned about this. The test results back up the initial findings of the cognitive examinations. The first clinical sign usually happen uh, within five years. For example, the capability of uh, small coordination is being, being affected. The second phase of symptoms are often much more severe. Patients can present with organ failure or neurological decline kecacatan ya tergantung dari seberapa besar daripada merkurinya yang ada dan seberapa besar daya tahan tubuh terhadap toksisitas daripada merkuri variasinya sangat tinggi mercury poisoning is more likely to impact children severely kalau misalnya bayi ini ternyata misalnya lahir tapi dia sudah terpapar merkuri pada saat si dalam kandungan bayi ini lahir mungkin kelihatannya normal atau bisa juga cacat tergantung dia gangguannya pada saat di Apa di kandungan ini uh, pada saat masa apa ya? Pada saat pembentukan organ. For the children of Sekotong, the results from the tests and other available evidence would strongly suggest that their severe illness is being caused by mercury. In such a scenario, international experts advise immediate action, such as the evacuation of polluted areas. In reality, this is unlikely to happen here. But NGOs have not given up hope. In Lombok, they've introduced a new method of extracting gold from the ore by using mills that make use of cyanide instead of mercury. Yang lagi-lagi support kita UNDP, kita diajak ke masing-masing dusun untuk menyuarakan bahwa ini loh bahayanya merkuri. Ya tidak menyangka bahwa uh, merkuri ini akan bahayanya seperti ini. Mereka kaget. The Tibu Batu Cooperative built a processing plant. 
Though cyanide is extremely poisonous, the residual danger of environmental buildup is lower compared to mercury. Uh, bagaimana? Secara alam juga sebetulnya kalau dengan cyanida sih itu jauh lebih aman. Karena uh, cyanida itu begitu kena air, itu langsung pecah menjadi nitrogen. Gitu. Jadi sebetulnya aman uh, buat lingkungan. Mereka tuh dari yang kalau dia pakai merkuri 20 gram, kalau pakai siadidasi dia hampir 60 sampai dengan 1 on mendapatkan itu. Itu yang membuat mereka itu tertarik menggunakan uh, siadidasi, proses siadidasi. Karena kalau dengan merkuri itu hanya sekitar 40 persen daripada ore atau daripada batuan yang mengandung emas bisa diambil oleh si merkuri. Tapi dengan siadidasi itu bisa 70 persen. But on the ground, execution proved tricky. Karena proses untuk mendapatkan uang, untuk mendapatkan uh, emas itu cepat. Kalau pakai merkuri, 2 jam sampai 3 jam bisa dia bisa dia menghasilkan emas. Tapi kalau proses sianidasi, dia 3 hari. That's not the only hurdle. Miners like Fatul Rahman usually haul at most two sacks of ore off the mountain each day. But processing with cyanide requires a huge amount of ore in one go. Ideally, 150 sacks. Even if individual miners could afford the weight, the cost of extraction is too high. Standarnya, misalnya, tadi standarnya tiga setengah, uh, misalnya, oh, saya, udah saya, saya dapat banyak ini, saya kasih empat juta. By working as a cooperative, miners can potentially deal with the issues of cash flow and time. But the most important hurdle has yet to be overcome. Kalau dikatakan uh, kita caranya memproses emas ini dikatakan ilegal, ya memang ilegal. Karena kita belum belum ada izin. Belum ada izin yang dari pemerintah. Uh, kita dari, masih dalam proses untuk pengajuan uh, kahil AS kalau kita bisa menarik atau membeli secara resmi emas-emas uh, yang dihasilkan oleh ASGM atau PSK ini hasilnya buat negara akan sangat luar biasa sekali itu devisa yang sangat besar sekali sebagai gambaran perusahaan emas besar yang resmi free Freeport, Newmont, Sukatani ya apapun juga Itu laporan terakhir yang saya monitor itu mereka menghasilkan kurang lebih sekitar 40 sampai 60 ton emas per tahun ke Indonesia. Ya, ke Indonesia. Kebayang seperti tadi saya bilang hitungan kasar. Sebetulnya berapa itu jauh lebih besar sebetulnya kalau mau dilihat sebenarnya. Nah, cuman sekarang bagaimana nih supaya regulasinya supaya mereka ini satu tidak merusak di alam. Kedua supaya mereka bisa lebih bersih, artinya tidak menggunakan lagi merkuri. Ketiga, bagaimana mekanismenya supaya emas yang mereka hasilkan bisa dibeli oleh negara secara resmi. The potential rewards for upskilling and harnessing the products of informal gold miners all over Indonesia could be huge. But to achieve this, the government has many obstacles to overcome. The meskipun target tahun 2025 penggunaan merkuri itu 100% tidak digunakan lagi begitu tapi uh, sekarang 2023 itu masih uh, ada di lapangan tackling the supply of mercury is one possible solution pemerintah yang harus kemudian tegas oh sinabar tidak diperbolehkan jadi tidak dikeluarkan izin and stronger international regulations may help so one shortcoming of the Minamata Convention in respect of small-scale mining is that the treaty regards this mining as a allowed use for mercury. So the position should be the other way around, that mercury should be banned. But if mercury continues to be so readily used by gold miners, and if black markets are not shut down, ultimately, it is the youngest generation and the generations who come after them who will pay the heaviest price. Kalau Bapak mau bikin saya pekerjaan yang lain, silakan Bapak larang. Bikin saya, 
kasih saya pekerjaan. Biarpun keadaan saya, anak saya seperti itu, saya sangat bersyukur ya. Saya akan usahakan gimana caranya anak saya agar dia sehat. Kan? Biarpun seperti kurang normal ya. Itu aja saya bersyukur ya sama Tuhan. Ya, harapan saya mau cepat cepat sehat lah anak saya.